Good morning, folks. We've got some top tier news to share today. We'll look at space weather, the major tropical storm systems, an asteroid flyby coming up on November 1st, and a new solar flare records data. We are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find the sun mostly quiet once again. There was C-class flaring, only a few sunspot groups, and no CMEs erupting in Earth's direction. But there was something that happened in the solar wind overnight. A denser stream of protons within the solar wind has triggered a low-level geomagnetic storm here this morning. Aurora around the polar region are lighting up the nighttime areas, likely to remain fairly minor, but a disruption nonetheless. Folks, we've had our eyes on two tropical systems straddling the Americas. The first is lacking significant organization, but is taking on the far eastern Caribbean islands right now with heavy rainfall. Meanwhile, Baja is taking impact from the other one this morning, strong winds with the hurricane. It is expected to cross over the Gulf and impact the mainland later. Hopefully these storms aren't too terribly severe for those regions. Up next, the Lucy spacecraft is expected to have its latest asteroid flyby on November 1st. It will test its tracking cameras as it flies by at a relative speed of 10,000 miles per hour and heads back to Earth for another whip around gravity assist and then out to the Jupiter region to study a few more. The top story today is a brand new solar flare record. They recalibrated the X-ray flare ratings based on saturation of the sensors, and it has now given us the list of the largest 38 solar flares of the satellite era. It upgraded the 2017 flares over X10 and tells us we are very much overdue for a major flare event. What's most interesting is that while it is common solar physics knowledge that flares should be random and evenly distributed across the Earth year, that's not at all what we see. If we take the last week of October and the first week of November, eight of the top 38 events occurred during that time frame. Those two weeks only represent 3.8% of the year and so we'd expect that period to contain about the same amount of the largest flaring activity, but instead, those eight flares on the list in that two-week window account for 21%, more than five times what we would expect. We have been saying that the end of October and beginning of November could deliver more flaring activity, and if that ends up being the case again this year, it may merit further investigation of the disproportional flare distribution. Lastly, folks, today is the day. Pre-orders of our new book are up. It is expected to ship out by the end of November. Learn about the disaster cycle and what we're expecting as it resets again in the coming years in the easiest and yet most complete version of the story. By the way, only way to get these before the holiday is to get in in this pre-order period. Link to the book is below and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.